Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. As you can see, this is lesson five, simply titled The Heart. So lesson five of the circulatory system, The Heart. This is after blood, uh, after the quiz. So we're going to talk about this thing for a few lectures in a row. Um, today is all about the different pieces of the heart. So there's a lot of different parts of it. So there's a lot of different terms that we're going to learn. Um, and I have grouped them in terms of like what they are and kind of in order. Uh, at the end, I will go through the specific order. So when we get to that last diagram, which I believe you have, it's a large diagram of the heart with a bunch of arrows. Um, kind of just make sure you follow your way through. Maybe you yourself draw a one continuous arrow as it goes through, or maybe you highlight so that you know specifically the, um, the avenues that blood takes to move into and out of the heart. That is the goal of today, to learn the pieces and then the flow of blood through which, uh, which pieces. So we have the heart. The heart is almost entirely muscle. Uh, it is very, very little fat. It is just used to work all the time and it never gets tired. It is composed of what we call cardiac muscle and it is the myocardium. It's just like a different type of muscle than what's in your arms or in your legs. So um, cardiac muscle, cardiac for heart, heart muscle. It has four chambers. This is the first part of the heart that we're going to talk about, the four chambers. So the heart has two atria, which are the upper chambers. That is this small one here in the blue and this small one here in the red. Uh, we'll talk about why they're blue and red in a little bit. But here we have the right atrium and the left atrium. You might be going, wait, that left one's on the right side and the right one's on the left side. And I'll say, yes, you are correct. But what we do is we imagine we are laying down inside the screen. We would be like turned around. And if we were to turn around and imagine that like that's our heart, that's the right side and that's the left side. So that is how we need to think about it. It is a little bit um, counterintuitive, but we think about the right side of our body or the left side of our body for the right and the left atrium. Uh, they have very thin walls because there is not much pressure. They don't have far to pump blood. The heart has two ventricles. These are the two bottom chambers here. You can see how much thicker the walls of these chambers are compared to this one and this one. So it has thick walls because there is high pressure because what these ones do is they need to push blood out to the entire body. They each push blood um, quite far, whereas the atriums just pump blood into the next ventricle. We also have the septum, which is this muscular part in the middle. It is the muscular central wall dividing the two halves. So essentially the pattern is that the blood will enter the atrium, go to the ventricle, and then be pumped out of the heart. It will then come around and enter the left atrium, go to the left ventricle, and be pumped out of the heart. So we have some structures to pass through in between that, but it always goes from atrium to ventricle and then out. So top to bottom and out. So the heart kind of beats top bottom, top bottom. And that's why you get your lub dub sound, lub dub. There's two parts to it, top bottom, top bottom. That's how it works. Okay, so how does blood enter the heart at all? So there are two major veins that bring, bring blood from the body to the heart. This is the superior vena cava, which is the upper portion, that is this blue part right here, and the inferior vena cava, which is the uh, bottom portion here. It goes from the torso and from your legs. So we're actually on key point two. The chambers was previously the atria and the ventricle. Now we're on the vena cava. So the superior and the inferior vena cava, one comes from the top, one comes from the bottom. They bring all the blood into the right atrium. So that's right here. I know it's the left side of the picture, but again, it is the right atrium. So these vessels empty into the right atrium. After they are in the right atrium, they go down into the right ventricle. And after they're in the right ventricle, this muscular portion pumps them up through these pulmonary um, arteries. So the pulmonary arteries are going away from the heart. So we have, next we're gonna talk about pulmonary arteries and veins. So pulmonary arteries carry the blood from the heart to the lungs. So pulmonary is essentially lungs. When we talk about heart and lungs, we're talking, uh, it's pulmonary. 
So we, it carries the blood um, from the heart to the lungs. Uh, this blood is deoxygenated uh, and is pumped from the right ventricle. So it goes to the lungs to do what? To get oxygen. So it, uh, uh, deoxygenated blood comes through the vena cava into the right atrium. The right atrium pumps it into the right ventricle when it is then pumped through the pulmonary arteries to the lungs where it gets oxygenated. Once it is oxygenated in the lungs, it comes back through the pulmonary veins. So the pulmonary veins carry blood from the lungs to the heart. It is oxygenated and it enters the left atrium. So it enters this atrium over here instead of the right atrium. The next place for it to go is into the left ventricle. After it goes into the left ventricle, it will be pumped out through this large uh, artery here, which is the aorta. And you can see it splits off. It goes head, torso, legs. Uh, there's a huge one that goes down the center of your body that goes and splits off to your legs. Um, so that is a very stretchy artery and it has a lot of pressure in it. We'll get to this again and go over it again as we talk about it. So that's the pulmonary arteries and veins, key point three. Pulmonary arteries carry blood from the uh, right ventricle um, to the lungs, and then the veins bring it back and empty it into the left atrium. We also have valves. There are four valves total. Um, we have the atria and ventricle separated by the atrioventricular valve. That makes a lot of sense, right? The space between the atrium and the, ventric and the ventricle is separated by the atrioventricular valve. It lets blood into the ventricles from the atrium and does not let blood flow backwards. So there's the tricuspid valve between the right uh, atrium and the right ventricle and the bicuspid valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle. So those are the two, the tricuspid and bicuspid. Uh, if we go and look at this picture right here, so this would be the first uh, atrioventricular valve. It is between the right atrium and the right ventricle. So it is the tricuspid valve. Uh, we have this valve here, which is another atrioventricular valve between the atrium and the ventricle. It is the mitral valve, the bicuspid valve, because it is between the left atrium and the left ventricle. We also have semilunar valves. So these valves stop blood from flowing backwards into the ventricle from the pulmonary and aortic arteries. So the pulmonary artery is the one that takes it from the right ventricle to the lungs, and we don't want it going backwards into the ventricle. So we have this valve. It is the pulmonary semilunar valve. So the, the semilunar valve that goes towards the lungs, pulmonary semilunar. It is located between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery, so it pumps and then it doesn't come back in because it catches on the valve and then it will pump and the next part cannot catch as it comes back. Uh, the second valve for the semilunar valve is the aortic semilunar valve. It is between the left ventricle and the aorta. Again, so that when it pumps, it doesn't flow backwards in. It leaves space for the aorta to fill it, or sorry, for the uh, atrium to fill it with blood so that it keeps blood pumping through and not backwards. These valves are very, very, very important. So we have, sorry, I'll go to that picture. That would be uh, this valve right here is the uh, pulmonary semilunar valve between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. And then we have this valve that's hidden back here. That is the aortic valve, the aortic semilunar valve that goes from the left ventricle to the aorta and stops blood from going backwards like this. That is not what we want. We want blood to flow into it from the atria so it can be pumped out again. Those are the valves. We now have the pericardium, which is key point five. You'll notice we're kind of getting closer to the end, which is nice, except for the final journey through. So the pericardium is this sac that goes around the heart. The heart is surrounded by a thin, tough, fluid-filled membrane called the pericardium. You can see it in this picture, how they're kind of pulling that sticky part away. That is the sac that covers the heart, and it stops anything from rubbing too much. It is very slippery in between those two layers. It's completely sealed and it allows the heart to move as it pumps. That is the reason that we have this membrane. It is like a bag for your heart that allows it to move against stuff while it's pumping without any issues because it does a lot of movement. Um, so we, have a, we would have the uh, pericardium going around 
the heart here all the way around it. But what we're going to do is use these arrows to talk about all of the structures that we're going to go through. So um, definitely maybe like make a list as we go through here or highlight some things. Um, watch this part a couple of times because it is very complicated. So first of all, blood will enter the superior and inferior vena cavas. They essentially come into the back and empty into the right atrium. It will go, the blood will then flow through this atrioventricular valve, uh, the tricuspid valve, into the right ventricle, and after the right ventricle, through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary artery. When it is, once it's in the pulmonary artery, you can see it branches off into two directions. That is to go to the two different lungs. So it goes to the lungs to get oxygenated and then comes back through these pulmonary veins. You can see them on either side with the arrows pointing in. The pulmonary veins bring blood back to the heart from the lungs and they empty into this back portion here into the left atrium. So the left atrium is this portion that uh, the blood will then flow through the this atrioventricular valve, the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. The, le the left ventricle will then pump blood up through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta well, where it will travel through the rest of to the rest of your body, eventually coming back in through the superior and inferior vena cava. So again, I would listen to that and maybe I would write down all those structures that I went through because you're going to need them. What you're going to do, and this is to hand in, there's a space in your booklet for a rough copy, is write a short story about the journey a blood cell would take to get from the inferior or superior vena cava all the way out to the aorta. Um, you're gonna make sure you use all the terms like the chambers, the arteries, um, the, uh, the lungs, everything like that. And there's a little bonus if you use the valves as well. So maybe it's a race to go through or maybe somebody's searching for something and they're the red blood cell trying to get it or maybe they're being chased. Um, kind of use your imagination. And again, this one's to hand in. Um, but if you guys have any specific questions about it, I'll be there to answer them. Thanks for mu so much for watching this one, everyone, and I will see you in class.